if you look back now, it's incredible what they have done to us with all the masks, mandates, the vaccine mandates, because they were there. The people lost their jobs. Small businesses are, are bankrupt, still going bankrupt now. And to be honest, I don't blame Pfizer. They are really a marketing machine making a lot of money. For me, it's, uh, it's, it's not a very honest way of making money, but I blame our governments. Avi Mini for Rebel News in London at the ARC conference. The pushback to the WEF. I'm here to talk to attendees who you usually wouldn't have access to and what you're about to watch is one of those interviews. So when you finish, make sure to like, comment and share. And then head over to followavi.com. Make sure to subscribe to our mailing list and follow me across all socials in case the interview you're watching now might be a little bit too spicy. It'll get me banned off the platform you're watching right now. Followavi.com. Enjoy. So you became an instant hero during COVID when, uh, I guess, when you questioned Pfizer. Now, when I, when I brought that up, you said to me, there's lots of things I've done, but that's the one everyone talks about. First, tell us about that, and then we want to hear about all the other okay. things that, that, that you think uh, people around the world should know about. Uh, well, yeah, I make... Um I made Janine Small uh, a famous person, I think. No, I, I think it was very important to ask that question because everyone already knew. We have seen Omicron and everyone who was vaccinated, they all get Omicron. So it, it was not helping. There was no evidence that the so-called vaccines, which let's call them the shots, they were not protecting the people from spreading the virus. Was the Pfizer COVID vaccine tested on stopping the transmission of the virus before it entered the market. Um, regarding the question around, um, did we know about stopping humanization before um, it entered the market? No. <laughs> After this video, all things were gone. It was uh, done immediately. Even the monkeypox was gone. So I think it was important to have that answer questions because it's such an easy question. You make a good point. It was such a simple question, but it was left to you to ask it. And the only way they, because uh, I saw it when they were shooting you down after it went viral, they said it was disinformation. Not the question, it was disinformation that you had implied that Pfizer ever claimed that it stopped the spread. Correct. Yes. It was actually governments that claimed on behalf of Pfizer yes. that... That was, that was my point. I was not attacking Pfizer. I still, it's a disgrace how they make money. But I was attacking our governments. Well, we asked Buller when he knew and why he didn't disclose it straight away. And that was another question that the mainstream media failed in every single opportunity that I had yes. to ask him. Well, governments as well failed to ask him, why didn't you tell us early? I know why. It's pretty simple because why would you disclose something, especially if the other side's not interested, why would you disclose something that's going to cost you billions of dollars? Yes. Yeah, well, the CEO of Pfizer, um, Burla, he multiple times said on social media that the vaccine was protecting against the spread of this virus, but it was based on nothing. And, and I think he is one of the person who should be held accountable to. But why do you think it was up to you to ask that question when the entire mainstream media dropped the ball and so many countries? That it's not like this was one policy by one country. It was globally taken on. Those green passports were instituted everywhere. Yes. And it was left to someone like you in the European Parliament to ask that question that back home in Australia, our government should have asked. I think every journalist should have asked that question. But I was accused by spreading disinformation because Pfizer never said it was tested on stopping the spreading. So I was spreading disinformation, but it's, it's really ridiculous. And to be honest, I don't blame Pfizer. They are really a marketing machine making a lot of money. For me, it's, uh, it's, it's not a very honest way of making money, but I blame our governments because they force us into a world that was, if you look back now, it's incredible what they have done to us with all the masks mandates, the vaccine mandates, because they were there. The people lost their jobs. Small businesses are, are bankrupt, still going bankrupt now. It was a horrible time, 
and our governments at that time were really responsible. And I really want to forgive those people who said uh, we have to do this, but there are a, a certain amount of people who did it on, on purpose and I think they still should be held accountable. So back to what you were saying, you, you told me everybody knows you about um, that question for Pfizer, which yeah. was... I think which really gave people hope that there was that there was somebody within the system fighting for them. What are the other things that you think people should know about the work you did in that period? Well, I'm an electrical engineer, but but I'm, I'm an entrepreneur all my life. I had an engineering company in uh, in energy. Um, I'm in energy for 30 years, and what we see with uh, with climate change, it's pretty similar that what we have seen with COVID. They are abusing fear to get people in a certain direction. It's a matter of fact, if you want to control people's life, you have to control CO2 because everything we do in our daily lives leads to CO2 emissions. Breathing, eating, traveling, living, everything. So it's, it's, it's a kind of similar to this COVID uh, situation. You create fear to push people in a certain direction and from there you can centralize the power. What we see in Europe, they abuse the Green Deal to, to give more power to Brussels and they created their own energy shortages by doing this crazy transition. But if you really think what's going on, it's, it's about degrowth. This is what the socialists and the leftists really want from us, degrowth. And I want prosperity for people, so we need more energy. And that's possible. We can create as much as energy as we want, as clean as, as we want. Uh, but but uh, then you need to, to include nuclear energy. 30 years experience. How dare you have more experience than Greta Thunberg? <laughs> well, that's also a joke. I never mention her because I, I think she is a kind of mascot or something like that. We had a hearing in the European Parliament and they uh, invited Greta Thunberg, who is a child who never finished school and they refused to ask for Professor Nordhaus who is a climate econom and Nobel Prize winner in 2018. So this it's all about symbol politics and it's not about real solutions, it's not about helping the people. They abused her to, to get more young people scared and into their movement. But to be honest, it's a great strategy to gain power. And um, yeah, I think the ARC is now uh, a counter movement and it's so important that we do that. But, like the whole argument through COVID was when people had an opinion that was the wrong opinion, they said trust the experts. Yes. Why with Greta is she the expert for the left on climate? Of course is she not. She's not the expert. And it's uh, uh, we're going to have to cut that misinformation. <laughs> no, but that is the real point. It's all about uh, marketing. And they are very good at that. And we see that with energy, we see that with COVID. There were so many doctors and health specialists that were silenced. Um, I was also cancelled from the social media for just sharing my own videos. And it's it just questioning the commission, which is my task as a representative of the people, asking critical questions. It was just not allowed. So you can ask yourself the question, in what kind of democracy do we live? If we cannot have free speech anymore. And it's becoming worse and worse because now they are fighting disinformation, you know. And now they created the Digital Service Act in, in Europe. I was one of the negotiators on, on that file also. And um, yeah, well, now they can make everything disinformation. So it's really scary what's going on and we really need to push back. Do you have hope that it's possible to push back and that you can win this fight? Well, uh, <laughs> that's a good question. I don't know, but uh, it's never too late to fight um, and we should have hope. But it's, it's a difficult fight and it's not a fair competition anymore. But let's see, we, I see a lot of more conservative governments coming up in Europe. Um, so that's important because then we have more prime ministers in the European Council and that's just the, the, really the, the important place where things are decided. So there is hope, uh, but it's a tough fight. And um, yeah, maybe um, we have to be some meaner. We are, maybe we are too polite and always try to find arguments, but um, we have to work hard. I'm not sure which interview you just watched because 
could be one of many I've done here at the Ark. But if you enjoyed it, make sure to like, comment, but most importantly, share it far and wide because I assume it's one that the mainstream media would not dare run. Certainly not the questions. So it's up to you guys to share it far and wide. And then head over to followavi.com. Make sure to subscribe to the mailing list and follow me across all socials just in case the interview you just watched was the one that's going to get me kicked off the platform you're watching on right now. So you don't want to ever miss a thing. Follow avi.com.